All right, Chris, and here we go with tonight's topic. Stock up, stock down the NFL Combine. So let's start with Ronnie Hickman. Uh, Ronnie did not participate in any of the drills. He did uh, allow them to measure him in his undergarments, which is a weird thing to think about in the yeah. NFL Combine. Anywho, he's six foot and a half, 203 pounds, his hand size was 9.38 inches. Not that that matters, but apparently the NFL thinks so. Since, since and, he's not uh, a quarterback, it really doesn't. <laughs> right, right? And his arm length is 33. But he didn't participate in any of the drills, stock up or stock down for Ronnie Hickman. I got to go stock down, Eric. I think that uh, Ronnie Hickman, as what is looked at as you know, potentially an undersized safety in the NFL, I think he needed to go out and have a good combine to really improve his position. Uh, I think he's going to have to go out and have to have a tremendous uh, pro day if he wants to get higher than a day three pick. I don't know that he can get higher than a day three pick anyhow, but he's going to have to perform very well at the pro day to have any hope of it. Silly question. Did he hurt his stock by even coming back and participating in 2022 for Ohio State as a as a fourth-year junior? He he did, and it's not of his own fruition. I think it was the improvement of that Jim Knowles got from the linebackers that probably hurt his, his standing because he didn't have the 100 tackles this year. It was Tommy Eichenberg right. who got up there and, and was plugging the holes and making the difference in the run game. So, yeah, I think it probably did hurt him. It. He Sean Spring himself, or not Sean Spring, uh, who's our corner a few years back? Uh, Sean Wade. Yeah, he Sean yeah. Wade himself a little Sean, bit by coming back. Sean Wade. Yeah, I, I expect it to be around five at the best right now. Yeah, I, I, I agree, six. and I think that had he gone out last year, he's probably late second or third rounder. How about Cameron Brown? Same thing. Didn't participate in any of the drills. This after bragging about how he was going to be the fastest in the 40. Then he doesn't even do any of them. Six foot, 199. That's his height and weight in Indy. The, well, and the size isn't going to be an issue as a corner. However, his injury history comes into question, I think, quite a bit there. I think he is someone who really needed to go out and perform well at the combine as well. Like Ronnie Hickman, he's going to have to have a huge pro day if he wants to be any higher, I think, than at best a fourth-round pick. At best. So you agree with me, stock down? Stock down. Okay. Uh, Zach Harrison, 6'5 and a half, 274. Uh, his hand size is 10. He had the longest wingspan in all of the uh, combine. His yes. wingspan is 85 and a half. But here's the thing. We all knew his measurables were uh, something. He was built for the combine. Yeah, but then he didn't participate, yes. so he didn't really help himself. I got to go stock down right now for Zach Harrison. I, I agree with you. This is a guy who was a five-star prospect coming into Ohio State, never really lived up to the hype. I think the last year he shoot, showed himself pretty well uh, as far as in the run game, but still didn't get the – the big pass rusher numbers that we expect out of a top tier end. He had to go out there and I think show himself at the combine. We, like you said, we knew the measurables were there. I think he needed to go out there, have a big 40 time and prove that he had that NFL in speed. Um, and then he had the other skills to go with it. He just didn't do, I mean, he did 25 reps. It's not bad. 24.89, I believe is the average uh, for an NFL defensive end. So he really didn't do much that much better than average. Yeah, I, I got to go stock down with him as well. There are only 32 five-star recruits every single year. Yes. Only 32, which means that the scouts believed him to be a future first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. And I will be shocked if he even gets drafted in the third round on the second day right now. Yeah. Stock way, way down for him. Uh, Luke Whipler, center, 6'3", 303 pounds. Uh, again, he actually did participate, though. He did. Um, his 40-yard time was 5.14. Do you think we would stand a chance against him in a race? You and I know. 
you and I know. Uh, you know what? I mean, it was a decent uh, decent 40 time. I mean, the NFL average among centers is a 5.21. So he shaved, you know, 0.07 seconds off what the average time is. 29 on the reps, too, on, on the bench 29 press. On the 29 on reps. reps. Yeah, he, he's, respect, he's respectable. 30 and a half inches on the vertical. 28 eighths the average. Uh, he did 106 inches on the uh, the long jump. Uh, you know what? That That's above the NFL average by nearly four inches. So he went out. Uh, the broad jump was a little, dis- a, bit, a little bit disappointing, I think. When you get out jumped by Paris Johnson in the broad jump, I feel like that says something because Paris Johnson is quite a bit bigger, I, you know, yeah, but is. usually your tackles. I mean, today your tackles are pretty dug on. They're athletic. pretty athletic, yeah. So um, you know, I mean, even though they're bigger, I mean, I feel like centers are like, uh, like a, a good strong dwarf can play center. Like yes. you don't, you well, do I mean, not have to be a ginormous human being, uh, and it helps the quarterback, especially those of them who aren't six four, six yes. five to be able to see over the line of scrimmage and and take a look at the defense. So him being well, 6'3 is not, yeah. I mean. And, and and the center position, I think, is a more cerebral position than it is anything in the NFL. Uh, I think you, I mean, yes, you got to be physical, but you've got to have the smarts, and I think he does have that. Uh, I think that he has the intellect. He had his best game versus Georgia against the top defensive tackle coming off the board, um, who may very well, you know, depending on what shakes out with trades, he could end up being the number one pick in the draft, the, the mm-hmm. defensive tackle from Georgia. So he's a legit player. Uh, Whipple had a great game against him. Uh, for me, I think that Luke Whipple is what we thought he was. I think he didn't really go up. He didn't really go down. Um I do think he's probably a late day two, early day three pick. I'm going day two. Yeah. I think he's solidly in at least the third round. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what happens um, in day one. That'll, that'll determine how I think how quickly he gets drafted in the second day. Um, but yeah, I'm with you stock same. I don't think he, he didn't hurt himself. At no, all. no, he I don't didn't. think he helped himself as much as, as he really helped himself. Like you said, in, in the sugar bowl. And, and who knows? We, we may see it. He, he could come out and have tremendous showing in his pro day at, at, at OSU. And that'll just bolster what we saw already. He, so he still has a chance to increase his stock a little peach bowl. Let me correct myself. Yes. The peach bowl. All right, uh, let's talk about the top four. How about the gentle giant himself, Dewan Jones? You biggest know, man, biggest man on campus yes. there at the NFL Combine. Six, One of the biggest quarter. ever. Yes, 374 pounds. His hand size was almost 12 inches. That's a ruler. Yes. I mean. Eric, you and I have seen this guy up close. We we yes, know we what a physical monster this guy I'm, is. I'm a big. We're both big guys. Yes, we looked petite. Yes, he yeah. is a large human being, and he's extremely athletic. Now he participated in the forty yard dash. That was it. He didn't do anything else. But, uh, he, but did, he was quick. He did run forty. He did run some drills. I think he did run some drills, some offensive lineman drills. Uh, yeah, not bad. Five point three five in the forty for a guy um, nearly four hundred pounds. That's that's pretty impressive. Very impressive. Did he stock up enough to sneak into the first round? I think it's arguable. I think he could be a day one pick. Absolutely. I mean, he had the measurables. Measurables. We knew about the measurables going in. He's got the size. He's got the strength. Uh, I think that his game film looks pretty strong. And I think that going out there and doing that 5-3-6-40 showed that athleticism that maybe some people needed to see. He was out running linemen who were much, much smaller than he was, Eric. So I think he's, his stock's up a little bit. I think he is a solid day one pick. Early day two. I think he's going to be one of the first picks taken off the board in the second round. 
I think a team that drafts a quarterback possibly could couple uh, that pick with a big right tackle and say, hey, hey Chicago. let's protect. Let's protect. Ooh. Well, they'll have plenty of draft picks. Yes. Sounds like they're going to trade out, out of that first that, that yep. first pick and and try to get Justin some help. So um, let's talk about Paris Johnson Jr., the other left tackle. Not quite the size that Dewan Jones had, 6'6 six, six and 3'8, 313 pounds. Um, he did 9'2 in the broad jump. And he did 29 reps on the bench, which is really good considering how long his arms are. Yes. Anybody who knows anything about the bench press, the shorter your arms, the easier it is to get the, 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 the longer the distance is for that weight. And so the longer your arms are, obviously the harder it is to do as many reps. So the fact he did 29 is actually pretty impressive. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, people talk about the long jumps, but if you want to truly test a big man's, uh, athleticism, put him on the broad jump. The broad jump is where he's going to show you what he can do. And I think that 110 inches when the average NFL tackle is 102 inches. I mean, eight inches doesn't sound like much, Eric, but that, that's a, that's a lot, especially when you're pushing that much weight up there. Eric, stop. <laughs> but no, th this guy, uh, you know, he, he was, a, he, I, he was a day one pick going in. I still believe he may be, if not the first, he's going to be one of the first guys off the board. Tackle wise, they're 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 saying he might have pushed in the top ten. Yeah, with his, I, I don't with what he did. He apparently he was really impressive in his interviews. He is well liked amongst teams. They're talking like he's a top ten pick. So, so Jackson, here's a question. Yeah, Chicago trades out, trades down. You're thinking Big Dewan's day day two. Is it possible they get the pair? Ooh, a pair. hey, a pair and a spare. Anybody? Luke Whippler the third. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you I, what, I old, old Justin Fields have a big smile on his face. Oh yeah, Buckeye, Buckeye, Buckeye Bears. Um, Jackson Smith the Jigba was six foot five eight, one hundred ninety six pounds. Uh, he did not run the forty. Uh, we. He did everything else though, except for bench in the forty. Of course, wide receivers in the bench. It's that's not really a thing. Uh, his vertical was thirty-five inches broad, ten and a half. Three cone drills, six point five seven. Shuttle time, uh, twenty-yard shuttle was three ninety-three. And most impressively, Chris, he didn't have a drop the entire weekend. Yeah, we we know about the great hands, Eric. Everybody knows about the great hands. We know about the crisp route running, you know. And, and he went out and showed that he looked sharp in his routes. Uh, the three code drill, like you said, six, five, seven, impressive. The short shuttle three, nine, three, also impressive. Uh, 125 inch broad jump. That's nearly five inches over the average NFL guy. So I think he did really well. His, his vertical was at the NFL average of 35 inches. I think he looked the part of a wide receiver one. I really do. Uh, however, and for me, this is a thing. He didn't run the 40 and for a wide receiver who's had injury questions, who's coming off of leg injuries of all things, I think questions linger. Is is this going to be a guy who's got it going? That it has it, you know, the ability to run those deep NFL routes. Um, you know, if he's back to where he was pre-injury, this guy should be the number one receiver off the board. I, I think. I think his draft stock could struggle unless he has a tremendous pro day and runs an impressive 40 time at his pro day. Right now, I believe his stock is, is, is the same, but it's got afterburners on it waiting for what he does on the 40 and it could shoot way up. Or he is probably way down if he doesn't do well. In the yes, game. but yes, that's true. Or if he pulls a hammy run in it, yes. which is the, that would risk, be the worst which... case scenario. That's the risk. He's well, so... and we saw it during the season, Eric. We saw it during the season. He got out there. He tried to come back too early. And what happened? Iowa. Yep. Um, so there might be there might be a. We'll just have to wait and see. And not, if he doesn't do anything on his pro day, I think he's probably the third wide receiver off the board, if not the second. But I agree with you. If he runs the forty and it's impressive and he looks good. There's a very good chance he's the first wide receiver taken off the board in a top 10 pick. Yeah. 
CJ Stroud. What can we say, man? Dude was again, he Georgia this thing. He Georgia it. And this what I mean the, by that, yeah. What I mean by that is he went out there to Indy and he answered the bell again. He 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 he's answering every critic he's got. By going out there and saying, I've got nothing to hide. I'll throw all day long if you want me to, because I can make every throw there is. Um, he answered questions about his lack of wanting to run. Uh, he did say he wished he would have ran more. I think he, which was a, to Buckeye, to Buckeye fans like us, we're like, oh, come on. Like, why didn't you do it then against that team up north, you know? But we were asking that same question uh, when he did it against Georgia. But the dude... I've said it multiple times on this podcast. He opened up his heart and sh opened up his chest and showed us his heart in that Georgia game. And he, I think that gave him the confidence that he needed. And I think he went out to the, in this, in this uh, combine and he f flat out answered every question you I've seen the, you've probably seen the quotes from scouts yes. just like I had. They are drooling over this guy. They've been drooling over this guy for two years because he can make every NFL throw, every one there is, and he makes it with extreme pinpoint accuracy. And there are coaches out there who look at that and say, I can win it. I can win a Super Bowl with that. If I put the right pieces around him, I will win a Super Bowl. Now, the, the whole thing was, He's going to have to have talent around him to be successful. That's what people said. I think if you have mediocre talent around him, he's still going to win more than he's going to lose. Yes. I agree. Stock up, way up in my opinion. Anybody who says this is not the best quarterback in this draft is an absolute idiot. I mean, I, I'm just going to put that point blank. Anybody who thinks that Anthony Richardson, yeah, he's got some athleticism. Eric, he throws like a girl. <laughs> he can't make the tough throws. He really can't. Uh, you, you've got uh, you, know, you know Bryce Young. Yeah, he's 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 decent. Throws well on the. He's run. gut. He's gutsy. I, he's I, gutsy. I he's a winner. He's a winner. You know what he reminds me of? Baker Mayfield. A slightly more athletic Baker Mayfield. That might not be a bad comparison. I see CJ Stroud and I see the next big thing. He had, really? like you said, he makes every throw. He is going to, he along with Justin Fields are going to shut up everybody who criticizes Ohio State for not pumping out quality quarterbacks. When Justin gets the, you know, gets some help around him, he's going to be tremendous. CJ is going to be tremendous. Uh, you know, and, I truly feel like after watching that that performance, that was, and, and I've been watching the combine for a lot of years, that is the best performance I have ever seen by a quarterback in the passing drills of the combine. And that coupled with that Georgia game, like you said, he's, he is the best draft, a quarterback in this draft. No, hands down. All right, let us know what you thought about the stock up, stock down for these eight Buckeyes who participated, some of them somewhat participated, in the NFL Combine. Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Make sure you check out uh, our live show on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, every Sunday evening. Please like, share, subscribe. It really does help out the channel, and we truly appreciate that. Until next time, guys, OH. Oh! Go Bucks.